Right, so welcome to the video, everyone. Um, before I start, just remember to subscribe to the channel and like this video. Um, so my guest, I've got, he's he's better known as Lefty, but his his hard left hand. It's uh, Mike Thompson. How are you, mate? I'm good, mate. How are you? You all right? Yeah, I'm I'm not too bad. Um, so we just want to. Uh, discuss your recent win at Celtic Gladiators um, and yep. you fought Jamie Roper and yep. um, you had a very impressive victory um, and let's talk to me a bit about uh, the game plan what was the game plan against him? Um, well the game plan to be honest with you the, the game plan for J- well, we knew, to be honest with you it sort of changed quite quick in the fight really because we obviously had watched him, but he hadn't fought for a while, and he sort of he jumped levels, and he, he like he grew as well because he was fighting at featherweight and went thing. So the pl- the plan really was to keep it long, but obviously within a few seconds we were in fighting a bit of a brawl, and then it went to wrestling. So I don't like to plan too much anyway, to say the truth with fight wise, because um, I would like enough being an MMA in there, and it can go to wins very quickly. So. We just um, we went in there a bit blind really because he went from local and we watched fights, but they were from like a while back. So, yeah, so yeah. Yeah, and um, he 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 had you in like a armbar. Um, <laughs> how close was that? Was that actually close or? <laughs> that was close. Yeah. It was was close. it? Yeah, it was funny actually because he come in afterwards and he was a sound kid. Like he was sound. Uh, and um, he come in and he said, uh, he said, you were brilliant. He said, I thought you won every round. He said, but I was in when I win that fight. And I knew straight away what he was on about. And he went, I felt your arm pop. You know what I mean? But obviously, I'd be in the one defeat I've got on my record. I was in a good position and got it with an arm bar. Um, so there was no chance I was tapping and losing to an arm bar again. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> So, so it, we were laughing like afterwards and that, but he said I felt it pop. He said I actually went to let go of your arm because I just thought that's it, he's gonna tap. So, yeah. <coughs> but, oh, um, it did, was did, on. Let me tell you, it was on. Was it? Well, yeah, did um, yeah, no. did, did you feel it pop? I felt it pop, but not like obviously you you know yourself with injuries, you can have like a pop where it's not gone. Do you mm. know what I mean? So I felt it pop, and like. For that split second, obviously a million things goes through your head, and there was the honest, there was no chance unless I even had mad things going through my head. Within that split second, I was telling my mate on me the other day, I was like, even in my hands broke here, I'm getting up and finishing this minute of the fight because I knew I was ahead. You know what I mean? I knew it was a big yeah. win, and that we must have been over in a split second. But the, obviously, it gets to a point where you've got to tap, but no. I went tapping unless it was snapped really. Yeah, yeah. Um, so the obviously you had uh, Jason Tamwidja and Peter Peter Davis. Yeah. Um, how important is that to have them like on your side mentally as well? Massively, really, isn't it? Because just massive. Um, especially like in the fight, there was moments when Jason was showing stuff to me, and I. It, Obviously, I, I have said this to people, I've said this to Jason, I think for a fighter, because you go in, don't you, and I'll, you've got to, you've, especially, all right, there was no fans there, but you've got to be able to put the blindfold on any good fighter and sort of like blank everything out, right? Yeah. But that can also be a bad thing, I think, because you've got to listen to your coach if you're in a bad position. And I, I, there was two or three times in that coach, and obviously, you know, Peter's beat done what he's done and what Jason's done massive in the game yeah. and Jason was giving me obviously as coaches do, giving me tips and he sort of got me through a couple of things, do you know what I mean, by listening so obviously you've got to be able to blank stuff out but you definitely need to be able to fight and listen to the coaches when they're giving you tips, do you know what I mean but yeah. it's massive to have them in the corner massive I mean, you, you can hear Jason from a mile away anyway. He's, yeah. he's, he's you can <laughs> definitely hear him. Yeah, um, but you know, yeah. it's like when you're fighting, you could have the loudest thing, and you just you're just in the zone. So it doesn't matter really about 
Well, obviously, if there's a cloud, <laughs> big job. But what I mean is, like, you've got to be able to also zone into the fight, but also try and listen if you're in a position. Because obviously, you can see a fight different from the outside than you can sometimes in the yeah. inside. So it's, yeah. it's good. Definitely. Um, so obviously, me next. My next question, uh, which a lot of people probably will ask, is how was training with the restrictions, COVID and all that? Uh, how did you go about training and, yeah. you know, getting y- your fitness up in that time, getting yourself ready for the fight? Yeah, it was, it was hard. Like, it was, obviously, it's the same. Obviously, we'll probably end the game. But, again, I was just trying to keep fit, keep active. I've got my own little set up with gym and a couple of weights I don't really lift any weights anyway but the bag and kettlebells doing circuits doing some online stuff but I went into it early um, but the mad thing about the fight like so like the training in them six months was hard and obviously you miss the gym and you miss everything and you just want to get in and spar and wrestle and do everything else Yeah. but what was hard about the like coming out of lockdown and then we went back in didn't we and the yeah. shows were getting moved right left and centre you didn't know if you were fighting you did so it was quite hard that's why I'm quite impressed with that performance because I had two fights cancelled within like the two months previous to it so it was on I was psyched I was getting to the end of my camp two weeks before it was off boom yeah. so you gutted you're fighting again right sound you're getting back into it bam it's off so that was more harder for me having like the it will up to like the couple of days before we didn't know the hundred percent what was happening and that so it was that was hard like that bit having like your heart broke thinking you were fighting and then a couple of weeks before you've done it you've done eight weeks here camp you get into the end of it you know what I mean so yeah. that was that was a nightmare like for any fight that can happen out of that can happen with injuries and whatnot can it you know what I mean it's yeah hard. yeah I think how many times like you can go to a camp and get to a couple of days out and the lad's sick or broke his arm or split his eye. So it, it's horrible. But in lockdown especially, it was touch and go because you just didn't know what was happening. So it was it was easy to get up for it because you're a fighter and you want to fight, but it was hard to get like totally thin because you just didn't know yeah. what was happening. Yeah. So did, did that have a bit of big effect on you mentally then? Not really, no. I try and not be too mental with stuff like but it was, it, you can't, you can't really, I don't know, it's a hard feeling to describe you like him. I just, I just, I just wanted to fight like so bad. And I'd done an eight week camp, got uh, nothing to do with our fault or the show's fault. The show got cancelled and I was, I'd done eight weeks of cleaning and I was gutted. So then I had a week off and it was like, listen, you can fight in four weeks. And I was like, sound, I'm ready straight back in a week not even a week before that it got moved and then South the Gladiator was on and that got moved yeah. like to two and it was just so like you spit you like you going in the gym saying as hard as we do and then every other week it was like it might not be happening it might be happening so then like the next few days was hard to get up for then during the move. yeah yeah so, so you didn't know what you were coming or going and it was just exactly, a lot of confusion yeah. yeah definitely yeah so that was hard as well as training t- 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 through lockdown, but you weren't training t- through a fight then, was you? So it's different. It, that didn't affect me really. We just don't, obviously, everyone probably just done what they had to. But when you're training for a fight and like you're right into your camp, and then that was harder for me. That was the bit that we, we were out of lockdown, but I was in fight mode, but I didn't know if the fight was happening or not. Yeah. So um, there was a. Teddy Stringer um, also fought on the card, and yeah. as you know, you've got a bit of history with them. You know, you won a piece. Yeah. Um, do you actually see a trilogy in the future with Teddy? Yeah, definitely. Yeah, definitely. Um, I I asked for that fight after I lost to him. Um, right. So straight away, I asked for that fight. Um, to be fair, when I beat him, he asked for the fight, and I said, "Yes, Sounds will do it straight away." And then after my fight, I asked for it with him straight away. Then it was sort of happening. And then he said, like, he's to be fair to him, he said, like, I'm not here to predict fights, but maybe if he wins once or twice, but I, I don't know. But um, so, yeah, it was on the cards. You know what I mean? It was definitely on the cards. And I think it'll be back on the cards again, whether it's that amateur or pro. 
Yeah. Hundred percent. Sounds good. Um, so you, you, you've just um, mentioned pro day um, with with the win over Jamie it takes you to six and one. What, what is what is your plans? At? How long do you see yourself remaining at amateur before you turn pro? Um, well, I don't know. Really, not long. Um, to be honest with you, we have spoke about it. Um, but obviously, to to this nightmare of a year, it's been a nightmare. I, I, I like to think it would have happened already if it weren't for the year that we've had. But obviously, we couldn't fight for eight, ten months, so that was a nightmare. But you know, there's no like we we know what's happening and we know what's doing, and we're chipping away at the goal slowly. Um, me, Jason, and the team. So it, it's it's gonna happen. So whether it's the next couple of months or it's a little bit further down the line, we'll be ready. Hundred percent. Yeah. Um. So just just a, a a little little bit bit of fun then. Um. Yep. Who are your top five fighters? Whether that be from your gym or from any organisation, who are your top five favourite fighters? Um, from from what from me t- so from the so pro MMA fighters. Yeah, it could be pro MMA. It could be from the amateurs. It could be from people you you train with. Uh, you you top five fighters. Okay, uh, so is this like? Let me think. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so this is just top five fighters to watch. Yeah. To watch. Okay. And is this MMA or any form of mixed martial arts? Um, MMA. Yeah. Okay. Um, the Diaz brothers. I love the Diaz brothers. Yeah. Love Mick. Um, I'd have to say. Um. See, I like the old, the the nineties early. So I'm trying to think. I used to love BJ. BJ was one of my favourites, definitely. Yeah, yeah. Um, and see all of them from that area, even like, I, I, I love Sparta and I love, love Anderson Silva. I, for me, like, even now, they still go on. So I'd say them two, BJ, um, and I love Anderson Silva. I love them. Yeah. You know what I mean? And obviously, I, to watch... Um, Definitely not Khabib, but Khabib's got to go down the list. He's one of the best, hasn't he? Definitely, yeah, absolutely. But, yeah, all done from that area, really, you have mentioned. And th- to be honest with you, I think some of the lads at the gym are going to have you because I give you the option of s- some of your uh, team members there, and you didn't pick any of them. Yeah, no, no, <laughs> no, they cannot leg it. No, if I ever want to watch someone, to lean off someone, Los Fitz is an absolute animal. Yeah, and um, he's he's gonna do big things, and he's just a beast in every form as I mentioned. And he coaches us, and he's obviously a top fighter. I think he's the European Pro Champion for UKFC now, and he's a beast. And every time he steps in there, it's it's fun to watch, and it's gonna be fun to watch. Yeah, so um, so like coming off that question, then um, yeah. we're. What what fights did did you watch for like inspiration when you were starting your, your career? Like it, it, these, the fights that you watched and what you kind of based your style off as like BJ and the Diaz brothers. No, really. So I was coming off a striking background, weren't I? So I was yeah. yeah like obviously, I grew up being my dad was a boxing fan. I got into fighting because of me brother and his mates who were all boxing. So. I just grew up on that only really. That, I, I say I'm now I'm a baby in the sport. I've only been doing MMA for three years, and I've yeah. I've kicked on in them three years massively. So I'm a proper baby in the sport. So I went really. I, I used to watch a lot of that that like nineties two thousand. Well, no, I'd say early. See, it come about nineties what year? So growing up when I was like between twelve and fifteen. My brother was really starting to get into it, so obviously mm. when all the Tito era and the BJ era come about, I yeah. used to watch them, but I still weren't doing it. So for inspiration, there was none really. I just started doing it off off the cusp, and 
there was no one really inspired everyone. I think McGregor's done well the last few years inspiring people with obviously what he's done and I think he's kicked it on in the country and the a lot. But yeah, yeah for inspiration, no, it was basically doing it in the gym and thinking, Wow, this is boss this, I want this to me. Yeah. Uh, so I'd say the gym, I'd say from Jason Laws down to Mike Wooten. Everyone in that gym I've sort of has been my inspiration watching and learning them off of them. Yeah. You've got a, a, a great great team over there, haven't you, at the Academy? Definitely, yeah, definitely. Um so I've I've asked about ten and ten and pro and but what what would you say is your plan for, for the next say like five years, where would you say you'd want to be with your career? Well, obviously I want to get to the top hundred percent and I think the plan is this year we'll turn pro. So whether that's I don't know if it's the next fight or the one after. So this year we will be pro, and my plan is to kick on as high as fast as I've went through the ranks to the amateurs. Really, um, yeah. Debut what two years and but June July two thousand eighteen, I'm ranked four no fifth now in the country or sixth I think I am. I was yeah. fifth. I think I went down to six, and I my plan is to go pro and go right through the pro ranks as fast as I went through the amateurs, really. Yeah, well, I'm definitely, definitely looking forward to seeing it, mate. It's, um, Thank thanks very much. It's uh, be, been a, a pleasure to chat with you and get you on and discuss the, the fight and everything else, mate. It's been, been really great. Same here, Kian. Thank you very much for having us. Thank you, mate. Thanks. See you soon, mate. Yeah. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.